Hi guys, how is everything? Mike here. Welcome to Game Dev with AI, the new series where we are going to try to develop our first indie real-time strategy game using the help of AI without any programming skills whatsoever. Consider this as some sort of a challenge to see if a guy like me who never developed any games, who doesn't have any programming skills in any of the game engines can develop his own game and publish it in future on Steam. Let's follow me in this process step by step where we first choose the engine where we're gonna develop in and then we'll try to solve different issues developing our first game. Are you ready? Let's get started. Since I have no programming skills whatsoever, the tools I'm going to use here to help me with the development is called ChatGPT. Unless you live under a rock, you already know how powerful ChatGPT is. At the time of the recording, they have different models such as 3.5, ChatGPT4, which is slower but smarter. And my idea is that it's going to help us explain what to do step by step and help us develop our game. The main question I'm going to ask is, I want to develop a real-time strategy game with the help of ChatGPT. Which are the top engines I should try to create my game without programming skills, preferably with drag and drop and visual scripting? And let's see what ChatGPT is going to suggest to us. As you can see, ChatGPT gave us a list of the best engines to develop, such as Construct 3, Game Maker Studio, Unity, Unreal Engine, and a few else. Before we dive deep into choosing our own engine, let me first quickly cover what kind of game I'm going to try to develop, what is the main concept, and what's the main idea here. 20 years ago, when I was a kid, still in school, I was a big fan of the old school real-time strategy game called Z. It's developed by British developers, beat my brothers, that's why it's called Z and not Z. It was developed in 1996. It's a classic real-time strategy game where the main focus is reporting. controlling your units and the battle instead of trying to collect resources you focus solely on capturing the flags, capturing territories, and more territories you have, the faster production will come. So the main resource in this game is time. You don't need to collect any resources. All you need to do is to collect the flags. And the more flags you collect, the faster the production will be. Units will be coming out of the buildings automatically, like you see over here. And then you can control them like in any real-time strategy game. And your goal is to destroy the enemy fort. This game is a lot of fun. In case you haven't tried it, you can still download it and play, for example, on Steam. So my goal will be create a game with a similar idea. Obviously, I'm not trying to recreate the same game, but more or less to create my own indie game with the same logic and the same idea. Before we dive deep into selecting our engine, it's very important to decide will our indie game will be developed in 3D or 2D. As you know, a lot of modern games are developed in 3D, especially big money budget AA plus kind of games. And most of the indie games are developed in 2D. And I've been thinking a lot about this and here are my few of my thoughts. The problem with developing in 3D is that the expectations are set way too high. There are way too many modern high quality games developed in 3D with very cool graphics, perfect animation, perfect visuals. So if you're developing this kind of game, the expectations are set way too high. And it's really hard to meet this kind of expectations if you're just a one game show like me. If you don't have a big team, you don't have much time, you don't have any programming skills, developing a game like this will take just way too much time. 
the problem is another problem is finding the resources for the 3d game the assets you see you can actually purchase assets for example uh, each engine has a library where you can go and purchase assets in the marketplace but this is not the route i want to go i want to make my own original game with original graphics not use someone else assets in the game to do so we can use tools provided by ai for example i can generate my graphics in in mid journey you know mid journey it's an ai generate tool uh, which works in discord it generates very nice graphics but all of them are 2d they're not 3d graphics and that's a big challenge of course there are other tools that can help you convert those generated units into 3d for example the tool i found is called uh, kdim3d.com which is very expensive tool but it helps you automatically convert existing image you can choose an image and then uh, buy credits and click generate and then it will convert your units into the 3d model for example like this so mid journey gave me model and then kd made 3d out of it but the texturing is kind of poor so this is another challenge to make the good textures you can make your own textures in blender or 3d max but again this is a lot of work guys and when you're just getting started you you'll drown into all these challenges developing the model developing the textures exporting importing all of this from blender then you need to create animations of everything moving turrets robots should be walking this is just overwhelming when you're getting started it's most important to make something very simple otherwise you'll just lose interest and give up very quickly that's why when i am choosing between 2d and 3d i want to choose 2d because expectations are lower a lot of great indie real-time strategy games such as their billions are developed in 2d and there is a lot of mobile games in 2d so that's the way i'm gonna go so 3d is just too complicated to get started now when making a game in 2d we need to choose the engine first i wanted to write it on the python using uh, pygame module and uh, chat gpt is really good at giving you python code so i started to write it using chat gpt i don't know any code so chat gpt was giving me the code and then i was putting the code here and it was quite easy you can see it helped me install pygame and then it was giving me uh, different codes that i could copy paste to make my own game if we run it okay it's not working there are a lot of issues with it as always okay here you go this was my python game two towers if i click and the mage appears he goes and shoots into enemy tower and i won so that's the game the problem with developing with python is that game gets very long very quick the code gets very long and if you try to put it into chat gpt it just overwhelms it it starts to drop the responses it starts to make the mistakes it's just not ready at the time of the recording to work with very long code so python will not work for us let's see what other engines we can use a monk recommended by chat gpt we see here game maker studio 2 
Game Maker engine looked very promising to me. I decided to see if I can make my game in it. So I even started my project. As you can see, it's visual scripting, which means you create objects and then you drag and drop different events and actions for each project. For example, here I have my hero tank has a sprite and then you have different events, events when you create it and then events during step, which means every frame of the game. So 60 times this will be executed per second. And using this visual scripting without any coding and using ChatGPT, we were able to make the following simple game in just one day. This is not actually a full, full game, it's just a prototype. As you can see, it's moving by the mouse and the tower is shooting. So this is all I could create with it. This looks very promising, but to be honest, I find it a little bit overcomplicated when you're just getting started. And ChatGPT had a lot of issues explaining me what to do. He was confused in the versions of Game Maker. There's Game Maker 1, Game Maker 2. It was giving me mistakes all the time. We were trying different concepts, trying the same thing all over again. And it just feels overwhelming, to be honest, because even simple things like movement and clicking, setting positions, it requires way too much effort, to be honest. And when you're just getting started, if you're one man show, this feels too overwhelming to me. So maybe this tool will work for you, but at, at the time, for me, this is just way too complicated and overwhelming, especially with the help of ChatGPT. The next one, we have Unity, which allows you create professional games and even 3D strategy games. Unity has visual scripting language called Bolt. But again, from tutorials that I've seen, this is way too complicated. And again, it requires you to know, learn a lot of math to understand everything that pass fighting, all this stuff. And like I explained, I don't really want to do game in 3D because you will be overwhelmed trying to find resources, assets for the game, animations, textures. Plus Unity is not free, you need to pay for the license as well. So for now, I'm not going to use it. Finally, we have Unreal Engine 5, which has perfect visual scripting language called Blueprints which allows you create professional games and you create them using this workflow charts by connecting different events to each other. There is a full tutorial on the UNF Games channel. It's 11 hours tutorial, which will explain you how to do it step by step to create your 3D strategy game. I started to watch it and it's very detailed and well made. But again, to be honest, this is way too overwhelming for me. This already requires you to know well how to work in Unreal Engine, to know all the logic. And this is way too much stuff for me when you're just getting started. And as you can see, your game is not going to be looking very well. You will have to put way too much effort to try and to automate and create animations for everything, textures, get the assets we get the same issue once all over again. So for me, I think Unreal Engine is way too much. It's a professional tool for big studios to make, create big budget games. For indie developers, this is just way too much. And the final engine that I decided to try called Construct3, which is a powerful and easy to use web-based engines with a drag and drop interface that enables you to create 2D games and logic quickly. As you can see, it allows you create a lot of very cool and very simple games that you can publish on Steam, you can publish them on mobile, and it allows you 
do everything using just drag and drop, clicking events, creating conditions without any coding whatsoever. Before I gave it a try, I checked the tutorial by Game Design with Riley. He has a ser two part series of just uh, creating RTS game in Construct 3, which is That's super, fun. super helpful. He explains all the basics, how to create the units, how to create the pathfinding, how to create uh, shooting, set the health. So before you get into this, I recommend to watch at least a couple of tutorials to understand the basics. Because even if you have no programming skills, you still need to know the basic of, of how the interface of the engine works. So this is the way we are going to go in this series. We're going to use Construct3 web interface. This is my project. I'm going to make everything from scratch. I don't want to use assets from other projects because this is very confusing. When I download other assets, then I will have already code that I didn't create. So I will not understand what it means and how it works and what's the problem is if I encounter the problems. That's why it's creating from scratch. It's much easier way to get started and as a main helper in our case we are going to use chat gpt which i am asking how to create my real-time strategy game in construct 3 step by step and it will explain us explain to us what we need to do step by step each step we we can implement and we just do what it does it ju we just do what it says. You can see it. it's really specific. It helps you to explain what to do, what to click, what events to do. So you don't really need to do any coding. And this is not generic. This is exactly step by step. Like if you have a teacher sitting besides you telling you what to do. So this is very super helpful. And when you encounter an issue, you can say my object doesn't rotate. It moves left without rotation and then uh, it will explain to you how to solve specific issues. So this is much more helpful just than just reading documentation or watching tutorials because this is exactly explaining you what to do with an issue that you have instead of just generic explanation of the features. That's why I really like this concept and I cannot wait to dive deep and create our first indie real-time strategy game together. Are you ready? So. Let's get started. Make sure to subscribe, leave me a like and in the comments below, please comment on issues that you feel I could avoid and maybe give me your tips, suggestions, everything that will help the process. I will be very grateful for you. That's all for today, guys. I'll see you in the next time. Take care. Cheers. Bye.